Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It is a beautiful February day here today in Johnson City. It's like 60 degrees. It almost feels like spring. I'm afraid we're going to get spoiled a little bit. I am excited about the weather, but I'm even more excited to introduce Tara Baker with Ginseng Mobile Bar to the po- podcast. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to get to know what a mobile bar is all about. But first things first, Johnson City Living, what do you love most about Johnson City? You know, okay, so in, in full transparency, I've been pondering this question because I thought that I might be asked it. Yeah, it could have happened. It's um, happened to a lot of people. And I listened to a, a few answers, and I don't want to steal of them, but they were good. Right, um, yeah. I would say uh, as a whole, um, you know, I really like that there's opportunity here. I like that, um, you know, no dissing to Irwin, but I'm going to. There's restaurants here. We do have a few. We're on our way, maybe, in Irwin. But, um, so I like that. And I like the people. It's home. I've been here forever. Okay. You know. Did you grow up in Irwin? Or did. Johnson City? Irwin. Okay. So, you, you know. used to come to the big city, Johnson City. Oh, big city. Yeah. yeah. For the restaurants. <laughs> for the restaurants. Yes. You used to come the here. The mall. That's right. We're going to go to the mall. Then we're hitting Red Lobster. And it's going to be a big day. The skating rink. Are you kidding? Skating rink. Yeah. Yeah. Anything and everything. So we used to have putt putt too back in the day. Oh wow! Sorry, you didn't know that. You're too young, but it was awesome. But we're gonna we need a putt putt place. Oh, we got one now. Duh, our friends have it over at um, Paradise Acres. So oh yeah, I, I totally dropped the ball on that one for you. Sorry, go to Paradise Acres. It's a great place. So you grew up in Irwin. Where'd you go to high school? Unicoi County. Yes. When did you graduate? In 2013. Okay. Yeah, go Blue Devils. That's, did you play any sports or anything? Um, no, I was um, involved with photography, actually, for a little tidbit there. Yearbook. Awesome. Yeah. Yearbook editor, that kid. That's art cool. Class, yeah. That was me. Graphic design, um, artsy. Painting, mostly. And, yeah. Watercolor, oils, what do you like? Acrylic. Acrylic stuff. Yeah. Oh, see, I don't even know. I'm with oils. They're like, she's like acrylic, dummy. <laughs> um. What do you love most about Irwin? Like a lot of our listeners probably don't know about our lovely town. Down the road, what, 20 minutes we can be in Irwin? Literally. Um, I would definitely say that there's opportunity there as a whole too. And just having the Nola Chucky in the backyard, the mountains. I mean, we are, you know, the Valley Beautiful. And literally, you know, from my, every window of my house, I can see, you know, the mountain ranges. And I just love that. The mountains are gorgeous down that way. And the Nola Chucky's fun. A lot of, done some whitewater rafting in Irwin, like mm-hmm. we started or ended up there. Um, go up the mountain, obviously, but it's fun. It is. And we have a ton of hikers that come through, and I love that. I love when the community is full of hikers because they're from all over the world, and that's always just, like, enticing to me. I want to hear the stories. I want to, oh, you're from Germany. Wow, you're here. In Irwin. In, in Irwin. Right. You know. Yeah, we connected, which is so cool. That's what I love about this. Like, I get to meet people like I didn't know you. I know your yeah. husband. But I don't know you, so I'm excited to get to know you. Um, you guys have a pretty cool downtown in Irwin, too. We're working on it. It's, it's, I Hustling. think it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, there's the Steel Rails Coffee House that Carly and I like to go to. And then I think you said you and Michael own a, a tavern, right? Yeah, we own Union Street Taproom. We've been there for five years, which is crazy to that say out crazy. loud. Yeah. Um, and that was just pillow talk turned into reality, literally. I. He, I wanted to move. I always said that the second that I turned 18, I was leaving. I just wanted more, something different to experience something. And then he was a Katrina victim and ultimately fell in love with Irwin. Still to this day loves Irwin. And so I said, well, if you're going to, you know, we're going to stay here. I need to be able to get a good beer. <laughs> and so we took on that venture and um, it was good. I mean, it's still good. I'm, I get to meet tons of hikers there, you know, and so it's very humbling. That's cool. Do you hit the skateboard park? behind you all you know no not very often you're not I a just, skater i have this theory of like if i were to actually get hurt what would i do yeah you know hopefully you've got disability insurance yeah yeah all the insurance <laughs> all sure. the insurances we got them all 
What do you like to do for fun in Irwin? Um, I would say, I, you know, whitewater rafting is something I definitely have done in the summertime yeah. and I take part in that um, for fun in Irwin. It's kind of tricky because we're still up and coming. There's not so you like, for all. fun, you like to get in the car and go to Johnson City? Uh, mm. <laughs> Maybe sort of, maybe. Uh, for fun, I like Asheville. to get in the car and go to Asheville or okay. um, Watauga Lake. We, we're lake people. Yeah. And so we have a pontoon boat, and that's kind of where we escape to anytime that it's 80. Fun. For sure. Yes. Watauga Lake is beautiful. It's awesome. I And I was blessed enough to kind of spend a ton of time there as a kid, and so Michael fell in love with it, too. So. Yeah, Full that's circle. awesome. And you guys have kids? We do. How many kids do you all have? One. One. We have one boy. Awesome. Um, He's about to be 10, and that's just nuts to me. That is nuts. Yeah. I, it's fast. People say that, but you don't really know. All the old guys, like, yeah, say so it's in a blink of an eye, and now I'm like a guy going, it's like a blink of an eye. Oh, for sure. So, There's no um, joke there. Just, yeah, just spend all the time you can with him, all the time. And he, he's big on the river, literally. He's a daredevil. I mean, one wheels, riding them everywhere. Oh, those just, are things are cool. Yeah, don't know how they do it. I don't either. They look dangerous. I would hurt myself. What was your first job? First job ever? Ever. Ever, ever. Well, I worked at Hog and Dog in downtown Irwin. Nice. Little barbecue joint. Shout out Lou Snyder. Yeah. And <laughs> Hog and Dog. No, uh, you know, I'm telling you, I, I'm very blessed in the fact that I can see these full circle things. And I think that, you know, that comes with getting older and I don't know, maybe just being aware of how things connect in life. And so the way that I run my business today inherently was from a lot of things that he taught me, right? You know, um, customer service. Absolutely. Taking good care of your clients. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell people all the time that that's the only restaurant I would have ate off the floor, and I mean that because spotless. Oh, hundred hundred scores on the mm. food quality. You can get those, I think, kind of easily. Oh, gotcha. Know. No, we literally had to like wipe the walls down and stuff. So it was pretty. It was very had a, We had a you know a strict schedule, but was he like a military guy? Yes. There you go. I respect it. Yeah. I think you go, I go in houses all the time and I oh, you know. almost, when I w walk in, I'm like, this guy's or lady is ex-military because oh. it's all just neat as a pen in order. Um, their trucks are always really nice and polished to a T and it just looks awesome. And so, yeah, I get it. Uh, so I spent a lot of time there and then that's how I ultimately have met so many people in our ones too, you know, yeah. they look at me now and I'm like, you. I used to hand over a barbecue sandwich, you know? Yeah. So it's funny. That's cool. Okay. So tell me about your business now. What's the name of it? Ginseng Mobile Bar. Ginseng Mobile Bar. Yeah. Okay. And so what is, I have no clue what this is and our listeners aren't either. And so I'm excited to hear about it. What is, tell us all about it. Okay. Um, so we're a mobile bartending service essentially, right? And um, what that means is literally what it sounds like. We're a bartending service that travels around. Okay. It was uh, meant to be this cute little side hustle. Yeah. You know, I was teaching. I'm a teacher too. I've lived, I have chapters in life, I think. That's cool. And so I taught high school for five years and was running the craft beer tap room. And that was what it was. And I thought I was bored. I wasn't bored. I don't know what I was doing other than being crazy probably. And so why not open a mobile bar? And why not? You know, we'll do it on the weekends. It'll be fun and it'll be easy. And it turns out that we really had a region that needed it. Um, it's not as easy as one may think. And it turned into a full-time career. That's wild. In a year. That's crazy. Yeah, literally. A lot of people like having people come and serve. Stuff. Yeah. So let's pretend Mitch and I and Marissa and Carly are having a little get together. We can hire you guys, the mobile bar, to come and just, what do you do? Yeah, so we're... Technically, a dry hire service in order to operate in Tennessee. So, like, you can't get a liquor license and be a mobile vendor. Makes you sense. Like because, a stationary location. Right. That's how you that. can't drive and drink at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> For a mil multitude of reasons. And, yeah. You really. know, sales tax and all the things. Gotcha. So, um, you would bring the booze okay. aspect, and I'm going to bring everything else. Okay. So, like... I would, you would, I would say, hey, we're wanting to have maybe bourbon cocktails or vodka mm -hmm. cocktails. And then you'd say, okay, well, here's what I can offer. And then we'd pick up the booze and yep. tell how that goes. Yep. Well, tell me more about that. We do it on um, a pretty large scale. Um, we, at this point, are doing close to 100 events a year. Oh, wow. Um, mostly weddings. 
there's a few nonprofits here or there sprinkled in and some corporate events, some realtor events. You know, I hang out with Nitar sometimes too. Oh, that's cool. Um, so that's nice. Those are repeat customers, obviously. And then with the wedding world, it's a little bit more intense than, you know, a little casual get together, as right. you can imagine. Yeah, someone's, a little stress, more stressful. Yeah, someone's best day, right? And that's kind of what makes it so much fun, though. Yeah. We're always celebrating someone's best day. And, um, it's an honor. Yeah, we had an event planner on a couple of weeks ago, and she was saying the same thing. Oh, little it's, Brandy? It's a big deal. Yes, oh. Miss Brandy. She is so sweet. I love Brandy. Brandy yeah. is my fairy godmom oh. in the wedding world, literally. There you go. So you guys uh, collaborate. Absolutely. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without her. Oh. Because I'm just telling you, I came into this not knowing what, I, what door I was opening. Right. And I needed someone like Brandy that was straightforward and honest, and I respected her greatly for mm -hmm. that. And so... Um, you know, anytime I, especially first starting out, and she has bar experience too, she has all the experience, I'm going to be like, hey, does this sound right, you know? And just somebody to call on because I was the only one and still kind of am the only one in the area doing what I do. Yeah. So it gets lonely a little bit in terms of just having someone to be like, hey, is this mentor. crazy or yeah. am I crazy? Right. You know? <laughs> I mean, by myself a lot, and it could sound crazy. Yeah. Well, that's really. cool. Yeah. So tell us about the, like, Take us through a night. Like we, you were, you were at a wedding, or you're you're doing a wedding, and you show up. You have like a trailer, or are you yeah. coming out? Are you, just tell, yeah, tell me. About we it. have um, a renovated 1968 tagalong camper, and so I think that's part of what spearheaded us into just such fastness. Um, a lot of times, people just kind of start by just showing up. Well, you know, I guess when we go in, we go all the way in over here, and so we renovated this camper, and that was fun. No one knows how to work on a camper let alone take a camper and turn it into a bar. Right. So we were, you know, anybody that would do the work and was willing to watch a YouTube video on how to do the work is who I have, like, hired. Yeah. Um, shout out Seth Thomas and Corey Gross because they were my guys. Seth is a good, good dude. I oh, love Seth. Yeah. He probably wanted to kill me near the end, but we got it done. We got it done. <laughs> That's right. Um, and so I think that the camper itself was just such an eye catcher that people were like, what's this? You yeah. know? And so... You, as a client, would choose if you wanted the camper bar, if you want one of our, we have six other stand behind bars now oh, at this nice. point. Um, and they all kind of look different. And whichever one you want, we'll load it up, bring it over. That's like your first step. And we're gonna ask you, you know, how many guests do you have mm -hmm. so we can prep accordingly sure. and charge accordingly. Right. How long you want us to be there. Mm -hmm. And if it's within a 50 mile radius, then there's no travel fee. We travel literally to we're licensed in Virginia and in North Carolina. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we go everywhere now. All over the place. And I went that really quick. I'm like, wow, Tri-Cities, here we are. Literally, Tri-State is mm -hmm. what my life became really quick. Oh, wow. And I, I'm humbled, seriously. I, I have a hard time expressing that to people. It's so crazy and it happens so fast, but I've learned so much and I've got to see so many beautiful places. Like this this business has literally took me to some of the most beautiful places on earth. How long have you been doing it? Three years. That's cool. We're going into year four. Going into year four. We've got 62 events booked for this year right now for 2024. That's exciting. Now, do you have a team or is it just you? <laughs> do you have a team? I do have a team. <laughs> I need a bigger team. Okay. Um, it's been me and my, any, I, I joke, if you were friends or family up until this point, then you were forced to bartending at your ABC license. Gotcha. Um, because it, again, just took off so quickly. I now have an operations manager. Nice. Yeah, that's growth. I have a, a warehouse, so I'm no longer running a business out of my basement. Storing all the stuff. Storing, yeah, all the stuff, all the syrups, all the mixers, all the things. Um, so that's been humbling. We have a, a company van, needed that. Yeah. Oh yeah. To haul the trailer and all that stuff. All the things. And um, my twin sister, she's always been helping me. And uh, I'm blessed for that. So she still helps with the client correspondence and all those things. So I would say I definitely have those two as part of the team. But we have about 10 bartenders that okay. pick up when they want to pick up. That's cool. So they have flexibility. A lot of times it kind of just, they're like, oh, I want to save for a beach trip or, you know, something. And then shifts will start being picked up. So Cool. It sounds like a lot of fun. It is fun. I'm sure, you, yeah. And then it sounds like some interesting hours, though, too. Yeah, like, there, there, there can be, that's for sure. Yeah, weddings don't shut down really early, typically, so I'm sure you've got some long hours you're logging, and then you got travel time back, and so... Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like a hard gig. It, way more than what 
I think it looks like on the outside. Sure. For sure. Yeah, and like, that's a lot of things. Yeah. They're like, oh, you just showed up a minute ago and you're good to go. And now I've been prepping for like a day or two. And now Loading and unloading, mm -hmm. lifting the things. And yeah. Nantahala, North Carolina is a place that we go to a lot. Um, and so it's a two and a half hour drive. Okay. A lot of times that last half hour is literally, you know, straight up a mountain. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's 30 minutes of no cell phone service, which is always kind of scary. <laughs> and then you, they always book the camper. Shout out my Nana Halo people too. But yeah. Uh, yeah, driving the camper to the side of a mountain and then leaving at, I don't know, midnight sometimes and then getting home at three. Yeah. That's a lot. It can be. That's a lot. Talk to us about some of your signature cocktails, stuff that you like, that you maybe created, you like to offer. Yeah. I mean, so they can go, oh, I've never even thought about that. I'm going to hire because I want you to get more business out of this. Yeah, so that... absolutely. Um, we like almost a lot of wedding planners and brides planning weddings and, you know, anybody and everybody. Pinterest is the go-to for almost all of those things. Okay. So we share a Pinterest board that um, is curated really. It's broke down by seasons. Um, so I try to, to keep that in mind when I'm suggesting things to clients um, based on whatever spirits they may like. Uh, and then the season and then even just things that... Um, and we incorporate dogs into menus. I mean, oh, that's cool. If you want to name your signature cocktail after your dog, we've, got it. we've done it. Um, we've even put rabbits on menus before. <laughs> so I'm just, seriously. That's cool. Uh, so there's always something there. It's very customizable. Okay. And if you're unfamiliar uh, with the multitude in the world. That there, there are a is, lot of cocktails out there, like thousands of them. So much, so much. We offer complimentary cocktail tastings with our clients. Nice. So we bring them to the tap room. Okay. Um, or we meet them at pop event company or at the venue or wherever. And um, they kind of fill out a questionnaire that lets me know what their tastes are. If they like rum, if they hate rum, if they like gin, they hate gin. Right. If they're allergic to strawberries, you know, those things are all paid attention to before we even create a tasting menu for you. Oh, that's cool. Then you show up and you you know, I'm told often that it's their favorite part of wedding planning. It would be mine. Yeah. Aside from cake. I don't know the cake. I was going to say the <laughs> cake part is really good. Yeah. So that's always fun. And I like that part. That's the part that fills my bucket. Aside from getting to know my clients, I've been really blessed in that my clients have been really great. I've got to meet a lot of really cool people that still support me years after. That's great. And that's that's amazing. Yeah, because you take good care of your people. They're going to come back oh, and take good care of yeah. you for sure. And I can't imagine it's someone's, I just have that in my head always. It's someone's best day. Yeah. You know, you kind of probably carry that too in your mm -hmm. film. All the right? time. So, yeah, it's they're buying a place where they're going to live and grow kids up and share good times and bad. And I mean, yeah. just it's, an, it's a special it's a special place and like you're having a special event you're part of it and yeah so, yeah we don't take it lightly like no. you you know so you, you got to honor them and honor that and take care of it okay so you got this tasting menu they get to pick from mm -hmm. two or three different ones or usually how? two okay. they'll do like a his or her choice is kind of how they break it down gotcha um and from there if they want to do a full bar we offer that too okay and um i do kind of sort of limit it to four additional spirits because i don't want you to have a whole label you know right. bar in the right. camper it, we are limited it's only 13 feet long well since we're buying it you got yeah hey here's your list and there goes a thousand dollars just some right liquor yeah and everything that you do buy as a client goes back home with you and a lot of times i'm like you may not want eight bottles of gin right going home with you yeah. so um definitely a lot of guidance and a lot of math there That's I, always, cool. I joke yeah. about that too i taught um high school english and now i do math all the time <laughs> i like it yeah yeah because I don't want eight bottles of gin. I don't, we have one, I think. I'm yeah. not a huge gin fan. Oh, but I haven't religion. tried something like, something that you've curated. So mm -hmm. tell me about some of your favorite drinks you make. Favorite drinks that I, oh, there's so many. That's such a tricky question. I love a margarita. I'm a tequila girl. Okay. Um, I, but we're known for our whiskey sour. We have oh, a really yeah. good one. I should have brought all the things uh, today. Uh, the secret here is some almond or orgate syrup. Okay. People, a lot of people are like, or yeet, what's that, right? So it's just an almond syrup. Um, and it kind of mimics the flavor of amaretto. Okay. Without having that necessary extra expense and the extra, you know, alcoholic component. Right. So we'll do that. Um, and I always add a little splash of OJ mm -hmm. into my sour mix. So you have lemon, lime, and then a little splash a little of OJ. OJ. It's a little sweet, but still citrus. Yep. And that complements the almond. And then it kind of comes full circle. Hmm. So we're kind of known for that guy. Okay. We're known for um, 
a lavender lemonade with um, a honeysuckle vodka in it Ooh, too. That sounds tasty. And the, the vodka is made um, in Mississippi. Cathead distills it, and so um, that came from my restaurant ex- experience at Tupelo Honey. Oh, so I kind of carried cool. that over. It was my favorite drink there. That's so. neat. Yeah, I was people say. love that one. Uh-huh. We'll garnish it with dried lavender, and that's always fun using edible flowers and different things to make you know the drinks. Yeah. Just pop. Yeah, and plus they're pretty. Yeah, absolutely. And guests are always, guests are always blown away. Yeah. And I, that's always refreshing too. Gotcha. You know. What else do you got that you like to make on the regular? Um, gosh. You good old fashioned? I'm an old fashioned oh, yeah. guy. Mitch, you like old fashions? Mitch loves old fashions. I can see him loving. Yeah, we've, uh, I've got a toasted or a campfire marshmallow old fashioned. What? Yes. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, but I will say we do more of the apple butter old fashioned than anything in the fall. Apple butter. Yeah, get rid of your sugar cube. You don't need it anymore because okay. there's sugar in your apple butter. And you should get the apple butter from like someone's grandma, right? right? Because that's the good stuff. Just put you a, like a little teaspoon in there and set up your old fashioned like normal. Really? Mix it. It's crazy how good it is. That's interesting. I might have to try that. Yeah. Apple butter old fashioned. That's cool. Yeah, and that came about because wedding season in Tennessee is kind of interesting. We kind of get two in comparison to other states because of the way that our weather is. Mm -hmm. And so fall is always nuts, Mm -hmm. as you can imagine, because it's beautiful here. Yep. And so it was, we do lots in the fall. Yeah. And And then when's the other season, spring? Yeah. And that one is picking up more. It's interesting in three years to watch things kind of shift and how they've moved around. Spring here is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I would have a spring wedding. Sure. I mean, it's awesome. And then, I mean, summer's not bad either. Mm Mm-mm. And then you go into the fall. So we really have a long wedding season, and that's why you're super busy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I would always compare myself. You know, you do that. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, these people are getting a break before me. <laughs> oh, well, I get it now, <laughs> you know. Um, but we do a lot in the fall, and then June. June this upcoming year is kind of crazy, huh. which is different than most times. What do you see the future of Ginseng Mobile Bar looking like for you? Like two, three years out, you come back on the podcast. I'm like, Tara, what have you been doing? What's going on? I, uh, I have a lot of ideas and they often get me in trouble, but um, I think that there might be a brick and mortar speakeasy possibly situation happening. And that's because doing these cocktail tastings with clients, I'm often hearing like, you should just do this. You know, you want, I want to come back and get this, yeah. you know, and things like that. So that might be in the future. Um, a lot of people want me to get a second camper, but I don't know that I like that there's one. It's sought after a little bit more in that way. And um, I'm the only driver aside from my husband at this moment in time. So that that's a whole other employee issue. Yeah. You know, finding someone. That's a skill set. One yeah. I did not have going into this. Is car. it a driving camper? Like it's a, like a, like a Winnebago kind of deal? No, I wish. It's not a, it's a tow behind. A tow behind, literally. Gotcha. And yeah. I'd never hauled anything ever before in my life. Well. Let's open a mobile bar. Yeah. Let's just roll on down the road. Especially in Irwin, which for a long time, they were like, hey, we're not having any kind of beer uh, or alcohol. It's still kind of that way. <laughs> it's still a little, yeah. Because you guys are like the only, are you the only tavern establishment? Um, Blue Ridge Paddling has opened now. And okay. so they're on the other side of town. So they're taking some of the heat from you guys. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> Thanks, Mason. It's not just our fault. It's <laughs> theirs too. I'm like, don't be mad just at us. Yeah. No, Even it's though Michael's some... like the mayor of Irwin. Which brings more heat, probably. Finger, fingers crossed, maybe. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, okay, so brick and mortar potentially, and then maybe more campers potentially. We don't know. Yeah, I, I like the idea of brick and mortar a little bit more. Yeah. I also like the idea of maybe working with venues locally. There's so many. Could you franchise out, like have one in Could. Knoxville and have a, maybe a, one out of Asheville? Or, yeah. I don't know. Just thinking out loud. Literally, Nana Halo would probably be the first place. Yeah, there you go, because you already got some. You could just have one that stays there. Would love that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And okay. even Chattanooga. There's a there's a big pool in Chattanooga. Yeah. People will, Chattanooga's awesome. Yeah. And I don't mind the drive. I go to Georgetown, actually. There's a huge wedding venue down there, Howl Farms. Or Howl, yeah, Howl Farms. They figured it out. Oh, that's It's cool. like six different venues on one property. What? So, so they could have six weddings going on the same property. Uh-huh. And every, like, it's an apple barn over here. There's, like, Italian villa over here. And then this one is, like, this, you know, modern, like, warehouse kind of structure. So they're all different. That's cool. So smart. 
I think the, the it, just having access to different materials that we didn't years ago. And, you know, now you're seeing through the internet, you can see all these different venues that you wouldn't have ever been able to see and know about. And so for somebody to take all that and combine it to one spot, that's just brilliant. Yeah. Because then you're like, oh, yeah, we're not, you know, you're not looking for a barn wedding. That's cool. We have this other one. We have an Italian villa wedding. You want that one? Or you want the one by the waterfall or yeah, whatever. There you go. Yeah. That's super cool. Um, what if some, what have been some of the influential people? I know you um, probably had some people help you out and you mentioned um, Brandy. Who else has helped you out along the way? Brandy um, has been a huge one. Holly Davis. I love Holly. She is so sweet. My, our son, Carly, uh, Christian, um, he helped um, serve a lot at okay. her weddings. Yeah. Yeah. And so when she was catering, he'd be one of her servers. And... I love that woman. I love everything about her. I yeah. just do. And of course, you know, she has her camper situation. So we hit it off immediately. Um, and she's opening a venue, right? Yeah. One I hope to maybe permanently have something at. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, Aunt Holly. Yeah. Oh, I think she knows. <laughs> We're supposed to have lunch soon. Um, no, she's just amazing. She's creative, um, and her family is just so beautiful, and they're kind. And they're, we were invited to be a part of a styled photo shoot um, at the event, oh, cool. and uh, that was beautiful. Oh my gosh! And one day she had, you know, she had called me and asked me if I wanted to go view the property. We were on a side by side for like two and a half hours. I didn't really know what I'd signed up for. Right. But it was, a, you know, it was amazing, and just watching her hop in this like side by side and like just. Just I just said, it all over the oh place. Oh my gosh, and yeah. she's hauling a camper that's double the size of mine and not even thinking about it. So I've always looked up to her. She's she's always. a cool woman. Jamie Jackson's another one that's been really good to me. I'm telling you, I, I walked into this being blessed with people. And I'll never forget that. I could cry, honestly. Um, and venues have been really good to me. The owners of the side porch, Lucy, love her. Yeah. Um, that's like going home to family. And then... Hannah Diedrich, which is now Hannah mm -hmm. Cox. Mm -hmm. You know, she has her bridal store here in Johnson City and then her boutique in Irwin. Yeah. So there's a group of young entrepreneurs in downtown Irwin, too, you know. And so I think that we are kind of all being able to come together and kind of, you know, build each other up. Right. And support each other. And support I mean, each you other. You get a address at Hannah's place and drinks for your place and go to Holly's and have the venue and put it all together. And we probably know. Marissa McGarry with Maypop can do your yeah. photos and you got to you need a DJ. Yeah. Somebody like that. I don't know. I'm just thinking that, you know, Mitch, you want to be the DJ? Um, yeah. So I think it's cool that you're collaborating and there's synergy there and, and growth and helping one another. I think that's the best part about our area, right? We love each other. Yes. In like a crazy way. Like um, we want to help each other. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, I, I was telling Mitch earlier, I have a ton of clients that come from out of town. All the people, this is a destination area sure. to get married. Did, wasn't aware of that myself. Me either, but I, know? I'm starting to believe it. We got a lot of people moving here. And I'll have them come to Irwin for their, you know, their tasting and they're from Georgia. And yeah. I'm like, you drove four hours. I love you for that. You know, thank you. Welcome. Um, but it's nuts to me, the influx of people. And I know you know that from your career too, but there, there is something magical about the people of our region and, and what they'll give yeah to each other what do you where do you think that comes from you know i don't know i maybe our roots mm -hmm. and i should say that there's a little pun for you yeah. right for ginseng so uh, i think it inherently comes from our roots and you know people of our past probably yeah i think we've give. really just taken care of people i mean we are the volunteer state we love we to are, help each yeah, other absolutely and i think um i think you know, that we have a huge body of believers like Jesus is just oozing out of a lot of us to say we want to love you and take good care of you. Yeah. And do what he would he would do. Um, let's say there's somebody out there listening to this and they're like, that's a bar idea. That's pretty cool. I'm in California. We don't have one of those. I want to start one. What would you what would be some advice for somebody to start a mobile bar? Research, 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 research. Um, there's a, a really awesome group and I mean, an academy and everything that I'm involved with now, um, Mobile Bev Pros. So it's huge. Uh, the, the founder of it, Sarah, she's Nashville based. And oh, cool. so um, she had a mobile bar for several years, she recently sold it and she's focusing on this whole, you know, coaching and mm -hmm. academy and really leading Getting in the set, industry. People set up and do all the things. Because there's not 
much out there otherwise. Yeah. And so I would get on Facebook and just mobile bed pro. That's what I did. And, um, you know, you can just read through what people are asking and just learn that way. That's cool. And then you have to have your ABC license to be able to serve alcohol. Yeah, that's the easy stuff. That's easy. That's easy. Doesn't sound easy, but it's no. probably pretty easy. Yeah. Um, what else um, are some things that you're, what are some other events besides weddings that you're getting involved with? Um, we've done a few uh, baby showers, which has been fun, non-alcoholic. We do a lot with mocktails. I was going to talk to you and tell you about that. That's cool kind of a push towards non-alcoholic beverages and it's going to get probably more intense because it's definitely very prominent on the west coast right now that's cool um so we do mocktails all the time straight mocktails at a wedding yeah and it's not just like some bougie lemonade but it can be that's right. what you're into right? right um but that's always fun and then learning about non-alcoholic uh, spirits i mean there's a whole world there there's a lot and um, we do a nonprofit event with Families Free every year. Love oh, Lisa cool. Tipton, yeah. another awesome mentor and just someone to look up to. And we, this past year, did that. We had a mocktail station. And I was able to just kind of teach another full circle moment, right, about these different non-alcoholic spirits and how they're made and, you know, where you can even get them. Because for a while, you couldn't even purchase them in the big city of Johnson City. <laughs> but now you can. We can. Yeah, you can. That's cool. So there's that whole world, which is really interesting. And then I already forgot what you asked me. I was just asking about other events. Like oh, other events. You did so baby showers. With mocktails and then, of course, the nonprofit stuff. And then... Where people have you for a birthday party. Yeah, birthday parties. That kind of stuff. Any kind of celebration. That's cool. Yeah. You're doing corporate events, too. Yeah, those are fun. That's fun. Corporate events are... They're interesting always. I feel like you get to learn a lot there. Yeah. And there's What's all... the craziest event you've had, have, you've been a part of? Um, Fourth of July event in Jonesboro. And, and crazy only that it was just... Millions of people. Tons of people. <laughs> um, Not millions. It's Jonesboro. It's Jonesboro. The but... town of 5,000 people. You can't have millions. Yeah. It, it was for Kelly Wolf and Jennifer Wolf. And um, just having Kelly. fireworks being shot off right there while yeah. I'm in the camper. And... They were really fun in terms of letting us create an awesome menu together. That's cool. So I got to be really excited about the different cocktails. I that can we hear did. him laughing right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can too. He actually is, and he's in Jonesboro. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so anything else that we didn't cover about Ginseng Mobile Bar that you that I'm like, hey, I forgot to talk about mm -hmm. that. Let's talk about pricing. Yeah. Because somebody may want to say, hey, this sounds really cool. How much is it, Tara? And, you know, I wish I could give a straightforward answer. And it's, you could spend a million dollars with you, I'm sure. Yes, literally. Entry level, like, In hey, we're going to have a baby shower with mocktails. Let's start there. Probably like 600-ish. Okay. But with mocktails, you're not having an additional We're not charge. adding on to the liquor bill. So you know, that's I'm bringing awful. all of that. Right. And then from there, if you're looking at a camper rental with about 100 guests, the standard beer, wine, two cocktail package, for us... I would say baseline is probably around 1200 Okay. And then what is like, let's say we do that, and what does it look like on my side for the, the liquor and the beer? Would kind of depend on what brands, brands and, and things stuff, you're right. looking at. So you um, could spend more or less, but ballpark yeah. it probably. Probably like 800 with today's economy. Okay. So Maybe we're about two less. grand all in. Yeah. Okay. That's not awful. Not when you don't have to worry about anything. And that includes the, the server person and the whole the whole deal yeah you're setting it up you just show up that's awesome we show up we do the thing i i try to and brandy would tell me to say this that we are a luxury service and yeah. so i should you know say that within the bounds of i'm i'm more than willing to meet people in the middle like sure. you know i i come from humble beginnings myself right so i always stress that to my clients when i'm on the phone with them you know if you're worried about something we can chat about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. I like it. Okay. And then it can get crazy. You could have oh, like yeah. four bars at your thing. We, and we did all an of event. Them. Bring them all out. With Brandy Whittle. That was the second one I was going to say. It was crazy. Uh, it was a 50th. No, just kidding. Not 50th. Some kind of an anniversary. I don't remember what year. Not 50. Okay. Um, I have six bartenders at that event, I think. Oh, wow. Four, Lots four of to people. six. Yeah. Yeah. But we had to. We had an entire circle bar. She had me doing a champagne toast oh, with like cool. actual glassware and stuff. So, yeah, it was. Um, it's always fun with her. That's fun. Cool. Okay, so 
Your husband's Michael Baker. Yeah. And what does he do in, in Irwin? He um, is an alderman and has been for a really long time. Um, and we're friends. I know him pretty well. He's a good dude. Yeah, he is. So tell me about what an alderman does so that I can harass him about it. Yeah, you know, he's probably going to hate me for not being able to probably say this the right way or the correct way, but they do a lot. Um, they sit on a board and essentially vote on different things within the budget, you know, different town aspects, I would sure. say. He spends a lot of time defending things, I think. Right. But, um, you know, there's always something new and those decisions, it's like a checks and balance system mm -hmm. is kind of how I always think of it, you yeah. know, so that the people can be heard. Yeah, which is what, it's like a local democracy and he's yeah. helping to oversee the the statutes and laws of the town and, and then growth. I'm sure they're looking at approving different things to annex and businesses to start and Absolutely. all that fun stuff. Absolutely, tourism. All tourism is huge over there. Yeah, yeah. we definitely as a town should market on it a little bit more. Yeah. How can um, people connect with you? Like if they want to anyway. set this up. Anyway. Honestly, it's kind of crazy. Smoke signal. Yeah, just blow it up. No. Uh, literally Instagram, we have our bio there, email. Um, we use HoneyBook for all of our client correspondence, and anyone in the wedding world is probably familiar with that. Okay. Um, it's like a big CRM portal. And so you can fill out a contact form on our website. It shoots you over. You're immediately sent a brochure. Okay. And you can kind of look over services that way. And then... GinsingMobileBar.com? Yep. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Yep. And then on Instagram, what's your... Same thing. It's easy. Yep. Well, you can connect with her and get going. I like it. All right, last question. What gets you fired up? Like, what's like, gosh, this is the best day ever. Like, I'm just jacked up. The sun. And today, it's out. All I need is some sunshine. Sunshine. Gets just you sunshine. fired up. Yeah, I literally. Love it. I love it. I'm very thankful for it, always. Favorite restaurant in Johnson City? The Label. You and Michael go to the Label frequently? Yeah. Cool. I love the Label. Yeah. Well, and that's a great place for a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. They do a great job over there. Yeah, those crab rangoons are amazing. And the June Carter, if you haven't tried it, try it. And they're, I had a burger the other day, black and blue. It was delicious. Yeah. Their sushi's fantastic. It's, it's like the Angry Bird. That's, they their, have like, a, that's their sandwich. It's delicious. Love that one. Uh, Raphael does a good job. Oh, and every I used yeah. to joke, and hope, I hope he hears this because it's kind of embarrassing, but I used to say when I grow up, I want to be Raphael because, whoa. Yeah, but I know he's grown up. He's, he's still <laughs> like a big kid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, I hope our listeners did too. Um, reach out to Tara. She's just super sweet and she would love to help you. If you're thinking about needing a bar, I'm sure she would be the person to call. And um, if not, she'd probably give you the right resources to figure out other stuff too. So yeah, absolutely. that sounds like a lot of fun. So thank you for coming on. We wish you the best. I hope you grow and you've got 14 mobile bars next year and we can you can tell me all about it. <laughs> Stressed. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you want to move here and meet Tara, call me. I'd love to help you buy a house, move to Irwin, Johnson City, Jonesboro, wherever you want to go. We would love to help you in the Tri-Cities. We've got a great team put together. And we also do a lot of property management. So if you need property managed, Tara, we'd love to help you with that. So thanks so much for listening, and I hope you have a great day.